I'm Robert Scoble and I'm in a really special place in Silicon Valley where the mouse was invented and we're here to see uh, or hear the stories behind one of my uh, favorite apps of 2010 which is this uh, iPhone app called Siri, S-I-R-I. But just to add to that because it's not just bringing up the new service that's terribly important. It's also if you have I'm a recovering mathematician. <laughs> so if you have n, one never recovers from that. Yeah. <laughs> if you have n services and they and each time you bring one up, you have to interface to all the others. You have a very hard problem, n squared problem. So yeah. delegated computing was the ability to bring a new service up. Let's say speech, for example, speech recognition with nuance, and um, and have it automatically work with all other services. Right. That's the that's part of the genius of this approach. Yeah. It, if I remember the tool, it when you told Siri, you know, get me a taxi in Menlo right. Park right now, it, it would parse that, and it would build like little pointers in a GUI interface almost that a programmer could say, okay, the right. taxi part it needs to go to, to this taxi web service right. Right. and pull some data out of that. Right? Exactly. Tell me, can you give me a little bit more hint about what that did for the, what that did for the programmer or, or the person who needed to hook into these services, and why that was revolutionary in terms of um, uh, letting them hook in more services very quickly, like you said. Yeah. So this is what um, the ontology that that, that uh, Gary discussed. Basically, when you have multiple services, they still talk about um, the same objects often. You know, a movie theater has a location. A movie ha theater has a list of movies. It has um, uh, geographic uh, information, what's nearby, and so forth. So by putting that into that ontology, then any new application that looks at, um, that has to deal with location or uh, uh, any other type of information, automatically has everything that was from uh, the other services. So all services work together by basically creating uh, an, a part of the semantic web. So reuse, I think that's sort of the reuse piece of right. it. I, another I thought really interesting characteristic is um, there's disambiguation. So you can say something uh, and the same word could be required by many different services right. or not. And so you can almost think of it like the way the brain works. You hear a string and like the word carry, I mean, there's carry limo, there's your friend carry, there's, and it's only the context of carry the Underwood. other, other carry Underwood, a singer, yeah. which is music. Uh, it's only through the context of the other words that you can figure out, oh, which domain is that really in? And the way that the ontology worked is essentially each domain would look at the string. Right. And then each domain would report back, I have 95% confidence this is in this domain because I saw, you know, a party size, a time, a location, and that looks like a restaurant. Exactly. Right? As opposed to like the theater, you wouldn't have a party size as part of the theater, for example, and so theater might come back and say, well, it's only you know fifty percent confidence. Which is the key to going back to making the voice recognition more correct. Exactly. Yeah. Because I, my friend uh, yeah. is, is uh, building a company on voice recognition, and he showed me how much more accurate voice recognition gets when you can reduce the number of possible me. words to a small set of words. Exactly. Right? Yeah. So if you if you do voice recognition at McDonald's, you know that somebody somebody's going to order a Big Mac or a right. quarter pounder, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Right. so if you only are expecting to hear those two words, you That's can make, it, make voice recognition highly accurate. That's right? true. Absolutely right. And, and in the context of McDonald's restaurant, you know, the Mac probably doesn't mean a laptop. You know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You order a Mac, you're not looking for a you know 13-inch notebook. Interesting. Yeah. So so that covers the beginning and the middle of this process. What what about the end? What what was that? What? Yeah. In our interview, when you guys showed showed Rocky yeah. and I this uh, cool new tool, I said you're going to get in a bidding war with some some companies, you know, Microsoft and Google. I thought, yeah. right? Yeah. I didn't think about Apple, but it, it totally makes sense now. Yeah. But I'm yeah. right. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Yeah. You know, in hindsight, it's like yeah, I should have said Apple too.
what did you get it? And what was that call like? You know, <laughs> does Steve Jobs call you up and go, "Hey, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, Gary, <laughs> this so, is Steve Jobs." <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so that's part that we really can't discuss in too in too much detail, other okay. than to say the following things. Um, Siri was on an independent path. In fact, we had just raised uh, through, with Horizons Ventures and the Li Kashin, Li Kashin Group, um, a wealthy and wonderful Asian industrialist uh, group, and. Uh, a uh, great partner in, in this venture, just raised $15.5 million, um, unspent, sitting there in the bank. <clears throat> we were, we had nothing in mind but to build, uh, you know, a really terrific company and hopefully get a great outcome for everybody involved at some point in the future. And uh, we did get a call, as you say, a call came into Doug Kitlas, the CEO. Uh, <clears throat> and the call involved uh, in a, a meeting immediately, and more than that, we probably can't say. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, in we probably could say so that that although we were pleased with the outcome, yeah. every one of us, including you know even the the team, uh, saw what, what this could become. Yeah. And I would just say it's an exceedingly difficult decision. Right. When you're faced with the prospect of, of a company and a team that is executing so well yeah. and has such a you know profound vision to change the world. And then you get an attractive offer. I mean, it was yeah. it was really a hard process. Yeah. <laughs> I think oh, we all went uh, through. Yeah. It was I, a series I, of attractive offers. Yeah. I, I won't talk for you, but in other times when other VCs have said that there's an attractive offer, it means there's probably ten times the money on the table. So, so that gives you a hint yeah, of. <laughs> well, <you> can't. <laughs> can't. <laughs> right. So and you just told me how much was invested originally, and you had sitting in the bank, so you can make it up. <laughs> um, in general, in general, when you're talking to an entrepreneur who gets that kind of call, so let's not talk about Siri, but in general, what's your advice to them? What, what kinds of conversations do you have with entrepreneurs who are faced with, you know, do you sell, do you try to go on your own and, and go for a, a building a great company on your own? Yeah, <clears throat> I, I think uh, like all investment, it, this becomes a risk-reward decision. And, uh, and it becomes, at least we, our, our approach is to take a look at an expected value calculation. And you do it, <clears throat> you know, mental distribution on paper if you like, but a distribution of the probabilities of outcomes and the value of those outcomes. And then you have to say, okay, what's your risk profile? How able are, is the team to, to absorb the risk of continuing? Uh, how able are the investor groups to continue to provide capital needed to scale the company? But uh, I hold with Sean, you know, when you have a company with the opportunity and the potential of Siri, it was a very difficult set of conversations and decisions to come to the, you know, we saw a great, yeah, and the, the technology is, is world changing, yeah. and we saw a great outcome here. And so it was uh, with, uh, it's, uh, it's, you know, it's uh, with some wistfulness that we all concluded, look, this is the right decision uh, on an expected value basis uh, for everybody involved. It was a great outcome. But having said that, you don't often get opportunities that really change the way people will interact with the internet uh, in in the way that Siri will. I'm absolutely confident. I, you know, and all right, absolutely confident. This is going to change people's daily lives in a big way this decade. Yeah, and that uh, let's not talk about Siri. That's an, yeah. another factor. It's not just money. It's the opportunity to change the yeah, world right. that, that really matters to entrepreneurs, right? Yeah. The, the, one more comment. That sure. that really resonated with the team. And you think of the world's best AI technology in the hands of the world's greatest consumer yeah. electronics company. Right. And the team saw that opportunity and they have a vision that they really wanted, you know, they were building a company and creating value and cre creating great e exit uh, potential, but they also, you know, want to change the world and they saw the opportunity in the hands of Apple to do that and I think they will. Yeah. I, I was just going to add, there, there's, I think that was a rational side, there's a very emotional side when it comes to making this decision, because in many cases, uh, for the founding team, this is life changing, yeah. and uh, I think you can't ignore it. Often that dictates. I mean, yeah. you know, we're investors. There's no such thing as indentured servitude. So, like, <laughs> when a team <laughs> wants to sell, they do, uh, because otherwise they won't work. Come to work and work as hard as they'll be angry at you, right? So, I think there's buckets of people that. Uh, I think like a Mark Zuckerberg, who doesn't really need money, yeah. 
you know, he's, he's probably very taking, low cost of living, you know, not married, doesn't have a well, flat he's mortgage. He's probably taking some off the table. Probably taking some well. off the table, but but even so, yeah. or somebody who's a successful entrepreneur in the past, who's got a big bank yeah. account, and they're the ones that are, hey, let's roll the dice. Like, I want to just do this. I want to be the CEO of a public company. And I think for them, it's pretty easy to use a rational argument and say, look, if you're growing 100% a year and you're being offered, you know, $100 million today, then next year you will be 100% bigger and you'll be offered at least $200 million, if not more. And you will know if you're in the lead or not, right? And so then you can say, let's hold out. We're patient capital. Venture investors are here for long-term gains, and we'll back you, right? If, on the other hand, uh, you know, you have a big mortgage and you see a, a bag of money <laughs> looking you in the face, it's 100% certainty, and you're going to be able to do whatever you want with that money over the next 10 years. It's just really hard yeah. to argue to somebody to not take that. No, it's true. I, Evan Williams at Twitter wrote his investors a list of reasons why why he should or shouldn't sell, and he came to the conclusion he shouldn't sell, right? Okay. Because yeah. he already had the uh, money. what we call fu money in the, <laughs> in the valley, right? You know, uh, he already had the ability. He, he he didn't have that concern, but he laid out you know a few reasons to 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 sell to a company, and he'd been through a Google acquisition and. Uh, he knew that it was rough for, yeah. for yeah. Uh, that they promised the world to you and then you get there and they don't deliver the world, you know? Right. <laughs> so and you're stuck so it'll be interesting to see what this company does and whether your prediction does come true. Yeah. Uh, that'll tell me a lot about the acquiring company as well as uh, some of the discussions that they had going in. Because you know? Evan says now he, uh, he would do a lot of things differently if he was acquired by a company. Uh, interesting. Company. Yeah. Interesting. Mm -hmm. you know, make sure Good that it point. was a successful fit. Right. Before Siri, there was, as we've talked about, agent technology. So first of all, well before Kalo even, there was <coughs> Doug Engelbart, you know, and then there was, um, in 1993, we started developing delegated agent technology where software agents became, Adam Shire was a basic uh, developer of that. I mean, Adam is a very modest person, but you know, here at SRI, he's probably thought of as the next Doug Engelbart. He's that powerful an individual. Um, and then uh, Adam left, actually came back from uh, commercial work, and we began a Vanguard program. Van and, and Vanguard was, at SRI, SRI feels, you know, I think rightfully, that it's been on the Vanguard of every major computer science revolution. And, uh, and we felt that the mobile phone, which at the time uh, was a computer of, uh, and connected, yeah. and had wonderful applications, including ringtones and SMS. <laughs> <laughs> and so the, the Vanguard... This was like 10 years ago? Or? 2003. Yeah. So in 2003, we began the Vanguard program, which was, uh, what, is, what, are the next, what is the next great revolution? It's the mobile phone. It's won the war of being the computer and the connected uh, 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 computer to the world. And... What are the applications that will come, not just ringtones and, and, and SMS? And at the same time, the government began the KLO program. Now, KLO stands for Cognitive Assistant That Learns and Organizes. Yeah. So the original model of KLO was Radar O'Reilly from MASH. Did you ever watch MASH? Mm -hmm. Do you remember Radar, who always knew what the captain wanted before the captain knew what the mm -hmm. captain wanted? Well, that's KLO. So what do you want? Where are you going to file things? What do you need to prepare for uh, your next meeting? Whatever. So KLO became almost $200 million program, $170 million program over five years. SRI Prime. The biggest in DARPA's history. Right? Maybe in the history of the United States, the yeah. biggest AI program. It had a list. The who's who of the world is the subcontractors to SRI, including Stanford, Berkeley, MIT, MIT. Carnegie Mellon and others. And from uh, Kalo became, became the obvious learning that what they called learning in the wild. Yeah. Learning in the wild is now possible. Machine learning can learn about you, learn what you're doing, learn how to interact with you, and provide you real-time support as an assistant. And this is what enabled, uh, this was the, the, that was the seeds of Siri. And, and this is huge because machine learning is, is now proven and will be applied in multiple fields over the coming decade. And so right. 
intelligent computer programs will assemble information from around the internet. Cloud computing is a very enabling technology because it recentralizes the data into the cloud. Yeah. And with all the data, both uh, both uh, knowledge data and usage data, you know, actual usage data, that being assembled and with machine learning algorithms running across it, intelligent programs will become intelligent at an increasing rate and, and surprisingly so. It, it's interesting because last night I had a, a conversation with Stuart Alsop and he says I'm investing for three to five years out trying to, trying to get out in my, my fingers into the vanguard. I guess you guys would yeah. do the same thing, yeah. right? <laughs> and one of his things he's watching is uh, what's going to happen in the world, world when we have IPv6 everywhere and every device, every electronic device like that light right. will have an internet ad address right. and I can Twitter to it or I can talk to it in some yeah. way. Well, we're going to need artificial intelligence in a big way to figure out how to how to find the right light. <laughs> you know, there's, Absolutely. There's six lights in this room alone. Yeah, you know, exactly. if, uh, each one of them yeah. had an IP address and a yeah. little computer on it and we could talk to them. We would yeah. need some artificial Absolutely intelligence. Absolutely right. All, all that complexity will very rapidly scale beyond humans' ability to manage it. And so to, to Sean's comments and Norman's comments, the ability to understand context and bring that information together to answer questions and answer them knowledgeably and correctly and not give you a million blue links. That's the paradigm for this decade. It's, you know, the blue link paradigm was huge in the last 10 years, transformed the world, but the world's moving on. And, and one last comment, and that is that, that Siri in Apple's hands creates a serious weapon <laughs> in the smartphone wars that others are going to have to pay attention to because if this transforms the human experience as we believe it will, then that's a competitive advantage. And you, that's, that, that's, that's since others, that, others are going to notice that, I'm sure. Since people like me think it's an Apple versus Google war right now, which is, uh, other people say it's actually Apple and Google against the rest of the world. <laughs> <laughs> that's an easy win. That's an easy win. Yeah. You know, that's why I say it's Apple versus Google, yeah. because yeah. I, I don't see the rest of the world doing anything interesting yeah. compared to these two companies. Do you think, have you heard of Google having anything like Siri inside? So, um, Sean said it well, that, that Google has a statistical base <coughs> uh, prejudice and belief that, that AI and, and that ontology modeling and so forth is not an effective means for intelligence. And <coughs> so that has historically been their view. I'm sure there are people who disagree with that, that within Google as if anywhere else. But <coughs> that has slowed their adoption of this class of technology. On the other hand, um, I know from first hand uh, that uh, you know they assembled a world class a speech recognition team. The Google Voice team was assembled by by uh, paying exorbitant salaries to some certain members of the Nuance team mm -hmm. and recruiting some of them white to form the core of the Google uh, speech team. Um, that technology is good and getting better all the time. Clearly, Google understands the importance and the centrality of that technology to the user experience and smartphone. So. It's an awesome company with huge resources and incredible yeah. people. Right. I'm sure they're going to be on this, and I'm sure they looked at this acquisition and said, mm, we're going to have to do something. Yeah. They did buy MetaWeb, which yeah. is much more squarely into sort of the semantic ontology. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I, uh, I was just with a mergers and acquisitions guy who doesn't want to be quoted, but he, sa he said uh, um, Google and Apple both are gathering $42 million a day in cash. And they we can help them with that. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, our, <laughs> and so that probably has you guys hot and bothered because you know that they're going to have to spend that cash at some point, uh, and that if they if they wait ten to, ten days to to acquire something else, that's four hundred more million dollars. <laughs> yeah. that's, they're going to be forced by the marketplace to spend that money. Right. So that probably has you guys going, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, the smartphone competition is, is heating up incredibly, and uh, I think um, e even in today's world with huge R&D budgets and, and world-class teams, as uh, there are at Apple and at Google and, and to a lesser extent elsewhere, um, not all technologies can be developed internally. And if you flip the picture around and say, well, for the venture capital industry, the IPO markets become very difficult. 
and uh, the number of IPOs is off by more than three quarters relative to the peaks in you know even normal years in the late 1990s versus today. And we have Sarbanes Oxley and stock options expensing and class action litigation and the list of problems. You know, it's, uh, our, uh, uh, at Finreg and FD and you know, fin you know all the all the other government restrictions that have been placed on companies trying to get public. So M&A is now 90%. It used to be, M&A used to be 70% of the exits and, and IPOs were 30%. Today M&A is more than 90% of the exits in venture capital. So it's a great thing that, you know, what war chests are being assembled and that a war is, is underway. It really benefits the venture industry. Although I'd say you still want there to be a vision of a company that could be public. Even if you don't get there, mm -hmm. yeah. so, so you have to talk about tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> what else? Is, what else is, that, is SRI doing today? You today? were telling me about something else. That well, there, um, I've actually recently been trying to put together, from SRI's point of view, what are the next waves of innovation? Is that what you mean? In well, and also you, you were talking about chatter. Oh, chatter trap. That's future. Okay. That's uh, that's going on today. It's okay. it's been announced. Uh, Chatter Trap is the next virtual personal assistant. So as, as these folks uh, know, and in fact, as we've been brainstorming together, given that you know that the world of virtual personal assistants is now real, and you can demonstrate its capability, and that Apple has gotten its slice of that pie, um, that's saying that that stopping because of one acquisition doesn't make sense. The, the field of AI continues, the fields of language continues, and, and it and continues at SRI. So uh, Chatter Trap is the next virtual personal assistant for your web news, basically. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Chatter Trap uh, helps the content find you. Okay. Okay. So you it, and you were talking a little bit about this with another company, but yeah. Chatter Trap. Flip, Flipboard, right? Flipboard, yeah. right? And uh, SkyGrid, but yeah. there's several different companies that are trying to right. eat at a piece of the news. So <laughs> this uses the personalization aspect that we just discussed. You know, so how does it, so Chatter Trap knows what you're doing, what you're reading, how much your time is spending, what you're sharing. It learns about you with other aspects as well, personalizes that, and, um, and then constantly finds the content that it thinks will be most interesting to you. And as your interest changes and shifts, your content um, uh, will, will shift as well. It uses the real-time web as, as well as the, uh, the regular web. So that will come, uh, that, that company's been started, um, it's been initially funded, and now we'll be seeking an A round very soon. Very cool. It's been such a fascinating conversation, I could, I could spend all day on it. Yeah. Because <laughs> you guys are seeing some interesting stuff and building some interesting stuff yeah. and investing in interesting stuff. So um, looking forward to seeing what else you guys Great. Uh, do next. Yeah. Until next time. All right. Thank you very Thanks, much. Robert. Thank Real you. pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Great, great conversation. Thank you.